What is up guys, it's Troy at The Full Setup here, back with another video for you. And today I'm gonna to show you how to correctly configure your Revelator IO24 by Presonus. I'm gonna show you how to correctly configure the universal control software. So what I'm gonna be showing you more today is gonna to be about setting all of the right channels, all of the right loopbacks, how you get everything running into OBS, but then also how to configure applications like Discord, Teams, and zoom correctly. We're just going to focus on Discord, but it's exactly the same principles um, for whatever program you're using. If you set this up incorrectly um, because this has a stream mix and you were to wanted to send your microphone, let's say into Teams or Zoom or Discord, um, and you set the wrong mix through, then what you're going to be doing is you're going to be taking all of that other audio, so like your desktop audio, your game audio, and also the audio from your guests, and you're going to be passing that back through. So I'm going to show you how to set that up correctly. We're going to be focusing more on the loopback stuff, the streaming sides, because if you get this set up correctly, this is an absolute champion for the price. This um, audio interface comes in at about £170, and I've actually been using it with an iPad as well, so I can control all of this on screen. This means I no longer have to use voice meter potato, I can get rid of my nano controller, I don't have to have my DBX for all of my extra features that I've got going in. Um, things like compression, EQ and all of that stuff. I'm basically down to one device now and then a little tablet to control it if I was streaming. So I'm going to show you all of those features and hopefully that really helps you out. Now, what you're going to need is universal control. OK, um, you're going to need the universal control software um, link in the description that you can download. Um, the only thing I would recommend is when you install it, it gives drivers for everything. Just make sure you install the Revelator drivers, otherwise you end up with loads of audio bits um, in your playback and recording features that you don't want and you don't need, okay? So first things first then, I'm just gonna show you, you know, some of the great extra features that you can have in regards to processing this microphone. Um, I only got this interface today, so I haven't got it quite nailed down to how I want it to be yet. Um, I've been more focusing on getting all of the loopback stuff sorted, but this wheel here, you can spin it around and there's loads of different effects. It's a bit cumbersome and like others have said from videos that I've watched, there should be a drop down. OK, you can apply simple things. OK, so simple gates, simple EQs, compression, and you can actually get a pretty good sound out of it just from here. But really going into the fat channel settings, this is what makes this thing for me ahead of the Go XLR at a fraction of the price. Um, I know obviously you don't have the sliders and I'm probably going to keep saying you can use an iPad. But for me, this is the one. OK, so you've got high pass frequency, gate, EQ, compressor and limiter. You can also swap them around. Um, so whether you want EQ before um, compression, I prefer EQ before compression. And then when you click on each one, maybe if I just go full screen here, you know, you can see all the different settings again. I've only just started playing with this today, so I haven't got it quite nailed down yet. High pass filter, always at 80 hertz. I prefer to use an expander than a gate. I find that noise gates sometimes can be a bit too aggressive. I prefer to take that noise and just drop the levels down a bit. Um, so here's some basic levels that I've been using for the expander. I will then add more noise reduction afterwards if I need it. OK, it's personal preference there. I'm not really super clued up on all of this stuff. So that's why I'm not going into it too much. Now, with the EQ, you've got a few options. So here I just cut around a thousand kilohertz is where I like to do a little scoop cut. And then again, because this doesn't have a de that's the only drawback. And they need to add one at a later date in software. I'm, I'm sure they will because every other person that's reviewed this has said that you need to add a de-esser in. Um, so I've just done a little cut around my S frequencies, okay? Now you do have some options in here. Um, the audio might change a little bit now, but you can also then add a passive EQ in or you can add a vintage EQ. Um, annoyingly, when you go back to standard, it doesn't actually remember your settings, but I'll show you how to get those back in a second. That does annoy me a little bit. And again, with the compressor, you've then got tube, and then that as well. So you can mess around with all of those. So to get back to all of those settings, all I'm going to do is re-click on the SM7B, click off, it turns it off and turn it back on. There might be another way to do this, but as you can see now, all of my settings are now back in. I'll just leave it on screen now. If you want to copy any of this stuff, go with it, use it as a baseline, but I've not really gone too heavy with anything or too aggressive, okay? That's just not, not where I'm at. OK, you can also save them as well. So if you just click save up here and then you save them to a slot so you can create different ones. I'll obviously create probably some for my condenser microphones. We're using an SM7B today. So we're, you know, 60 dB again coming in. Um, the preamps do sound very nice. You can and obviously add some digital makeup gain in afterwards as well. 
and you can add more gain in the main output gain okay so over to the things that i really want to show you though the loop back features using this for streaming i know that's what you came here for so firstly let me show you the settings in windows then so you've got the main output you then have loop back output one and loop back output two and then in recording you have the main input loop back input one and loop back input two okay I'm not going to get too into this okay but these are the settings that you've got you then have four mixes here okay main record loop back one and loop back two okay so the main mix is going to be your headphone mix this one is loop back one and this one is loop back two i've literally just renamed them to whatever i wanted okay so that's what they're named by default that's what you will see in here so what i have got is i've got my system audio set to loop back output okay so let's say we were playing our game we're streaming whatever playing some music all of that stuff so we'll just play some music here and as you can see as i turn this one up that is then bringing audio in and then this one we have set for discord because we want our friends online while we play with us this could also be zoom teams anything any chat that you've got coming in so you can figure these which i'll show you in the settings in a second so this is our main mix and because it's our main mix you know i want to hear my game louder so i'm going to have this one turned up a little bit playback i've got muted that's to zero we're not using channel two mute it anything you're not using just mute here's channel one here's the microphone so this is our main headphone mix okay essentially you can then adjust the settings up here a little bit as well um to you know output phones you can then even turn it up a little bit more here but that's going to add a little bit more gain so that's all of the main headphone output then and this is everything that you're going to want you know coming into your headphones you might decide that you want your microphone quieter because you don't want to listen to yourself you know the whole time that you're recording this so how do we get the stream in okay how do we do that as you can see here i've just got it set to mic mic the main one the main input okay and that's all that you need to have it to that's what you just leave it to because all you do is you turn on this button here stream mix watch i turn it on still coming through still coming through here but then this one's lit up and this is our stream mix again you can listen to it you can monitor it with your headphones let me just resume the music and there you go that is your stream mix it just came through very loud then because i had the other mix on but that is just going to bring you in and obviously you're going to probably want this one lower because you don't want your game sounds as loud you can then adjust your discord to suit okay do exactly where you need to be and then you can monitor it on there switch back to your main mix and now you're monitoring that main mix so what about discord then how do you do all of this in discord because this is the problem okay so we've got this stream mix we could have game sounds coming here chat coming all in here but we want to put our microphone into discord teams zoom whatsoever if we put this mix in then everything that would be coming through here so everyone you're talking to on discord would hear your game sounds they would also hear themselves back this is where we've got the problem this is where you use these two loopback channels. And I've gone for loopback two. You can use loopback one if you want. You could use this one. It wouldn't be a problem to use this one. But I've gone for loopback two because I know Discord is on the other loopback two. It just keeps it easy for me for, to configure everything. So as you can see here, I've got everything muted again. It's all turned down. We can turn that one down. But then we've got our microphone coming in. So here we are on loopback two then. And we've got everything muted. We don't want to be adding any extra stuff to this okay all we want is our microphone we've got the preset selected all of that stuff and then what we go to is because this is loop back to input okay so we've got loop back to input selected in discord this would be exactly what you would add in teams and in zoom or skype any other voice chat application you would set this to loop back input to loop back output to is our discord coming out so that is what's coming into our stream mix what is coming into our main mix that is the discord and that is how you set it all without feeding in all of the other stuff because you don't want that stuff to come in to this channel here the people you're talking to they don't want to listen to game sounds they don't want to listen to themselves back again and that is how you correctly configure this so if you were to just put in the default input when we have stream mix on it would feed all the audio in so that is why we have those inputs so just to cover this one last time then we have our main mix okay this is the mix that's going to our headphones so obviously we've got the loopback one which is set to our pc that is going to be our game sounds okay that is 
going to be cranked up more because I want to hear that more. I've then got the Discord in here as well. We can turn the microphone down if we don't want to monitor ourselves. We then have the stream mix by pressing this button up here. Here we have loop back one, which I've got set to PC and game. Okay. That is going to be bringing our sounds in from our games. And then we have our Discord set to that level. Loop back one we've left is blank just to save a little bit of confusion. But again, everything is, should be muted. We don't want anything getting in the way. Okay. Now loop back two. That is our mix that we're going to feed into anyone else. This is what we want to send to our guests. Discord, Teams, Zoom, all of that stuff. So there is just a quick overview for you of the Revelator IO24 by Presonus showing you the universal control software. Honestly, for £170 with dual mic inputs, enough power to power these DT9 9250 ohm headphones that I'm wearing. Sweet sound, 60 dB of gain for sure SM7B. Awesome software. I think for £170, it's an absolute bargain. I now lo no longer need to use voice meter and a MIDI controller. I don't need to use an external voice processor and I don't need to go get a Go XLR for £350. That was a big thing for me, especially seeing as that team has left and gone and set up their own company. It's made me not probably want to buy that product. Anyway, if you have any more questions, please do let me know. Um, if there's anything that you've you know found out, little things that may, may could have been done better, please let me know in the description. Obviously, I haven't had this very long, so... This is just some very early tests, but I really do hope that this has helped you out. Make sure you leave a like, comment, subscribe, all of that stuff, and I'll be back with some more tutorial guides very soon.